you. Eastern Illinois coming off a uh, narrow one uh, possession loss to Northern Illinois. They're going to be at home. They're going to face Chattanooga, who is 11th in the stats poll, 10th in the coaches poll, which was released this morning. They uh, shut out Wofford 31-0. So, Coach, just some thoughts on your team, and then we'll go to some questions. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, you know, certainly it was um, – I was really pleased with the guys' effort, um, their energy, and their enthusiasm on Thursday night, um, going on the road in a hostile environment and playing against a quality opponent. But – um, there was a lot of positives to take from it, but certainly there was a lot of areas that we know we need to improve on this week um, and have a great challenge and opportunity, certainly to play a, a quality, like you said, top 10 or 11 team in FCS football at home in the University of Tennessee Chattanooga. So uh, pleased with, with some things, but a ton of stuff that we know we've got to focus on um, improving this week. And that's been the biggest focus this entire week has been how much can we improve from game one to game two? The improvement of our football team and our growth mindset and just worrying about ourselves and preparing to play at home, uh, whoever it may be, this Saturday night at 6 o'clock. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Dan's got some questions. Go ahead, Dan. Morning, Coach. Morning, Dan. Um, you mentioned, you know, there's some areas that you want to focus on. I guess specifically is what, what comes to mind. Yeah, so, um, you know, the biggest thing for us was the penalties. Um, having eight penalties the other night, uh, something we'd like to clean up. You know, there were a couple questionable, but but um, just any operational percentage. Uh, penalties are things that we'd like to try to avoid that we can, if at all possible. Um, and certainly the turnovers. Now, again, one of them was was kind of just as good as a punt, and, and we thought it was a good decision by the quarterback to let it fly and give us a chance. Um, but the other one I know is a throw that Jonah wishes he had back. He just um, was a little bit inaccurate in that one throw. But, um, you know, those are the two biggest things um, for us um, is just trying to eliminate some of those penalties. And, and again, we want to make sure that we win the turnover margin. That's been a big focus for us all spring practice and all fall camp and certainly was going into game one and will be every single week. Fans and we in the media, of course, are guilty of this too. Oftentimes kind of overreact to, to the opening week. Um, how do you, how do you prevent your team from doing that? Or is that a concern at all? Yeah. So uh, again, I, I told the guys in the locker room right after the game, I was really proud of their effort. Um, I, I was super proud with their intensity and their, and their ability to show some physicality and a presence that we talk about having but there are no moral victories um, in a loss and there are no moral victories going to be here at Eastern Illinois university. And the goal is to win. Um, so, Hey, what we want to do is we want to learn from any opportunities that we are not successful and we want to move those forward and have the opportunity to be successful. So the ultimate goal is to win the football game. Um, but I, I tell the guys very often that things are never as good as they seem. And they're usually not bad as bad as they seem. The reality is somewhere in the middle. And so we still have a tremendous amount of work to do, but I have been very pleased with what I have seen so far from an effort, energy, and enthusiasm standpoint. We've just got to execute a little bit better, clean up some things, and focus on ourselves and continue to grow and, and uh, improve as a football team every single week this fall. I got one more for you. Um, just how's the overall health of your team coming out of game one? And I guess specifically, I want to ask about Isaiah Hill, who obviously didn't play against Northern. Yeah, so Isaiah sustained an injury early in preseason camp, and, um, you know, it, it's an injury that he will, we do expect to get him back at some point in time. The goal is to have him back for the first Ohio Valley Conference football game, um, so when we go on the road to play Murray in a few weeks, um, but, but um, he has been working out every single day. He has been in all the meetings, um, but this is something that happened very early on in preseason in our first helmet and shoulder padded practice. He went up for football and just landed uh, funny, and so, um, but we expect him back. So uh, he should be back. The overall health, you know, certainly like everybody in the country, we've got some bumps and bruises and some guys that may be a little more sore than others. When we get back on the field this week, it happened to be Monday. Normally it'll be Tuesdays. Um, but by and large, we are um, fairly healthy. So um, our strength coach has done a phenomenal job in the offseason trying to prepare these guys for what will obviously be a marathon. And our athletic training staff has done a phenomenal job, you know, trying to keep the kids healthy and, and um, get those guys that are banged up or nicked up back to the competition um, this weekend. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Anybody else got a question for Coach? Let me know in the chat. Uh, you mentioned Chattanooga a little bit, but they are obviously a top 10 team. They've been very good the last five to, to, to eight years or whatever. What specifically have you seen from them? Obviously, their defense was good to shut out a, an opponent in week one. Yeah. So Coach Wright has done a phenomenal job. The irony is, you know, he's an alum. He's about my age. He met his wife there. She was a student athlete, too. She played volleyball. My wife played softball here at Eastern. Um you know, I know he played with T.O. and, and um, he has rebuilt uh, them very, very quickly. And they are an amazing football team. They have a, a definitive identity. Um, their offensive line is, is big and physical. 
Um, you know, McClendon Curtis is, is an all American candidate, certainly a guy that'll probably play on Sundays on the O-line. Their quarterback is a winner. Um, they're young and athletic on the perimeter, but their offense revolves heavily around Ford, the tailback. He's an all American candidate. Um, they run the tight zone, but when they run the wide zone, boy, he's going to find a little crease. He's going to stick a foot and, um, you know, he gets 15, 20 carries and he's got 70, 75 yards and he rips off an 85 yard run. And the next thing you know, he's got, you know, 150 yards rushing. So he is a very good back. Um, they have a very firm identity offensively. And then on defense, whoo, they build themselves inside out, front to back. Um, the Maxwell kid in the middle uh, is one of the finest defensive tackles that I've seen in 28 years of coaching college football. This kid's going to play on Sundays. It's a credit to Coach Wright and his staff that they've been able to keep him there in this modern era of transfer portal and things like that. But boy, is he a good football player. Um, they are built to stop the run and rush the passer. And their guys on the edge, on the edge of the defense can run and bend. Um, and collapse the pocket quickly. They're a senior linebacker crew. Um, they're Will linebacker. Beck, um, I think, is the program leader in tackles. Um, and then they're athletic, you know, in the secondary and know exactly what they want to do. So it's a tremendous challenge. But we are excited about obviously having a chance to play at home uh, against a, a very, very well-coached, good football team in the University of Tennessee Chattanooga this, this Saturday. And then just playing at home, you're going to have another home game then until October 8th. So you get to start at home, your first game coaching there since uh... – you know, since you were an assistant coach, just those thoughts on, on being at home. Yeah. So, you know, certainly just, <laughs> it's a privilege and an honor to be the football coach here at Eastern Illinois every single day and, and what this place did for myself and so many other guys. Um, but I think taking the field Saturday night at O'Brien is certainly going to be another special moment. It was, you know, last Thursday, uh, leading the football team onto the field for the very first time as the head football coach. But, um, you know, I know that, um, Coach Spoo will be watching um, as, as we take the field this weekend. And, and like I said, I'm just excited about the opportunity to lead these young men and watch them continue to improve um, and get ourselves ready to play uh, this Saturday night. Well, Coach, thanks for your time. Uh, best of luck this weekend. We'll talk to you again next week. Thanks, Kyle.